What's up everyone, Takedown here, back with another video. So today, I'm gonna be sharing with you me unboxing my new one terabyte PlayStation 4 Slim, but I'm also gonna be giving you guys a story as to why I needed to get a new PS4 and what happened whenever I went to go and trade it in. Let's get right into it. So up first, why I needed to get a new PS4. So as you guys might know, I was having some problems with my PS4. Once in a while, it was coming up on the screen saying, I don't have the system software updated or I don't have the system software at all. So I would have to call PlayStation and after calling them numerous times to fix this problem because it kept repeating itself, I knew exactly how to troubleshoot it on my own. I didn't need to keep calling them. So basically what I had to keep doing was wipe everything off of my PS4, basically factory resetting it, and then signing back into my account, and then plugging in my external hard drive, and it took about an hour for my saved data on the cloud to download onto my PS4. But every time that I had to wipe off everything on my PS4, any videos or clips that I made on my PS4 ended up being lost. At first, this problem was only happening once a month for me, then it ended up being once a week, and before I traded in my PS4, it was happening every two days. So since the troubleshooting was only a temporary fix for me, and I was having to lose everything every two days and have to re-download everything, to me, it was time to trade it in and get a new PS4. So I called EB Games, which is GameStop in America, and asked them what I needed to trade it in. They told me the PS4 just had to be turned on, it had to have no cracks on the outside at all, it had to include the power cord and one controller. If you didn't have the power cord and one controller, or it was cracked or didn't turn on, it wasn't going to be accepted in on trade. Now since my PS4 did still turn on, there was no cracks or anything and I had all that extra stuff, I was told I would get $180 for trade-in value. I also had two other PlayStation 4 controllers which I was going to be trading in as well and that would have been an extra $50 trade-in value. So in total with my PS4 and the two extra controllers, it would have gave me $230 for trade-in value. Now before I continue on with this story, I know what you're thinking. My PS4 does have a problem with it and I'm attempting to trade it in to EB Games. But what EB Games does is they take the consoles in as long as they work and they're not cracked or anything, they ship them off to headquarters to get fixed and refurbished. So whenever they ship it back to EB Games to be sold as a refurbished PS4, it's not going to have any problems with it. So since this year, unfortunately, the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 bundles were not on sale, I decided it didn't matter when I went to get my PS4, the sooner the better. I didn't have to wait for it to be on sale because it wasn't going to be on sale. So because the PS4 bundle was $380 and I was going to receive $230 in store credit for trading in my PS4 and two additional controllers, that meant my new PS4 one terabyte PS4 Slim was only going to cost me $150. So I basically packed up my PS4 and everything that I was going to be trading in and went to EB Games. Now the closest EB Games for me is about 40 minutes. There's one 40 minutes east of me and 40 minutes west of me. So it's 40 minutes either direction. So I ended up going to the one that was 40 minutes east of me because we did have to do other shopping there that day anyways. So whenever I went in, I was dealing with the manager and all he did was took the PS4 out of the box, looked at the back and put it back in the box and said, sorry, I can't take this in on trade. So me being confused because I did call numerous times asking what I needed and I was told this will be something that they can trade in. I was really upset as to why they were telling me they can't trade it in. The reason he told me that they can't accept it in on trade is because the warranty stickers that are on the back of the PS4 were removed, which I removed them myself back whenever I cleaned my PS4, which was about six to eight months ago. My PS4 was running a little sluggish back then. I opened it up, cleaned it out perfectly, and it ran good ever since. But because I removed these warranty stickers to get into my PS4, they wouldn't accept it in on trade and I was extremely pissed. So I ended up leaving that EB Games and finished the shopping I had to do in that town anyways. Now before I left that town, I ended up calling the one that was 40 minutes west of me, which since we're in this town now, it would take us 80 minutes to get there. I called them to ask them what I needed if I had to trade it into them and to explain to them before I made the trip that I do not have the warranty stickers on my PS4 that I opened it up to clean my PS4. And they actually told me that it doesn't matter if the warranty stickers aren't there, as long as the PS4 turns on and it's not damaged at all, they should be able to accept it in on trade, except they can't tell me for sure over the phone because they don't have it there to look at. So I ended up biting the bullet and making the additional 80 minute trip to the other EB games to get it traded in. 
And I was glad I did because whenever I went in to get it traded, they basically just took the PS4 out of the box, made sure it didn't have any cracks on it, which mine didn't. I keep all my stuff in pristine condition. They basically just plugged it in, made sure it turned on, and I was good to go. So they gave me trade-in value, my $230. So for my PS4 Black Ops 4 bundle, it only cost me $150. I was in that EB Games for less than 10 minutes and they had it all done for me, ready to go, and I was set. So now I know next time if I need anything at EB Games, go to the one that is 40 minutes west of me because they will actually help. If I go to the other one, they always cause problems for me. It's just less headache if I go to the one that actually knows what they're doing. Now this PS4 bundle included Black Ops 4, which I honestly didn't want. I don't like that Call of Duty is futuristic again. I don't like that it doesn't have any campaign in it. So I really like campaign and since it doesn't have all those features, it's basically just multiplayer. I decided instead of me breaking the seal and opening it up, I was going to sell it online and I ended up selling it online for $50. So for me, trading in my old PS4, my two old controllers, and me selling the Black Ops 4 game that came in my bundle, it literally only cost me for my PS4 one terabyte, $100, which to me is an amazing deal. I'm glad I traded my stuff in and I'm glad that I got it to work. So now on to the unboxing part. So I actually got my PS4 over Christmas. And as you guys know, I take two weeks off at Christmas from recording videos. So since I got it over Christmas, this clip doesn't have any of my audio in it. It's just me unboxing my PlayStation 4. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me unboxing my PS4 and sharing a little bit of the story I had and the problems I had getting my PS4. It was a real struggle. I didn't think I was going to end up trading mine in, but luckily the other one ended up doing it and that's going to be my primary EB games from now on. I am going to leave this video here. See you guys in the next one. Hope you guys did enjoy. Peace.